So tell me about what's uh, happening here on the house, what we're seeing. This is Peak Moment. We are living at a peak of human innovation, information, wealth, and health. But we're also at a peak of population and consumption, with rising temperatures and declining resources fueled by cheap oil and gas. Peak Moment Television, bringing you examples of positive responses to energy decline and climate change through local community action. This is the straw bale structure, and it looks pretty conventional from the outside because we have pretty conventional siding that's meant to match what's on, what we've resided this mm -hmm. 1912 craftsman style bungalow. We have a metal roof, and that way mm. we can do mm. really great water catchment. And all of the soffit, with the exception of the one piece falling off, um, is reclaimed lumber from all of our offcuts from the framing. Oh, okay, okay. So, and then we have this porch, which is all reclaimed lumber. Um, Poles. poles from a property on southern Oregon yeah. that we brought here. Yeah. And then we have what we refer to as urbanite. So it's basically broken up concrete. And that is from a shop that was once where our chicken coop is now that we deconstructed. Oh, this. okay. So, so you just, just moved, moved it, over it over here, here and it's the little decking or patio kind of yeah. space. So here we have a nice kind of cool space that faces the rest of the yard. And so mm -hmm. you can see the community mm -hmm. from here. And invites you. Uh, there's your social space, right? Exactly. Invites you to, to be looking at everybody. Mm -hmm. Okay. And inside. Inside. Hello. Hi, Megan. Hi, Megan. Come on in. And I, I asked Lydia for a tour of your of the house. Yeah. That'd so be great. thanks. We'll give give tours all around. Oh. Wow, what a different, it is different feeling. You mentioned mm -hmm. that, but it's, I, what I notice is that it's quieter. Mm -hmm. You know, this is sort of, uh, but the first thing that I see, you made it from the front door, is this rounded, the rounded mm -hmm. edges yeah. to the windows. That mm -hmm. is, so, so tell me, I mean, what, what am okay. I not seeing here? So what you're seeing there is where we have the bales. You can see that they create a really deep window yeah, wall. Yeah. Um, so we have straw bales on our west, north, and east walls. And then we did, the house is basically conventionally framed. So we were able to use conventional engineering specs, all of that to apply to this house to keep the engineering costs down. Because mm -hmm. sometimes you do sort of an unconventional framing and that ends up costing you a little bit more money. So it's way. like two by fours or two by sixes or whatever standard. Yeah. Okay. All of which we got reclaimed from the Max Construction, which is our public transportation, and saw an ad on Craigslist and got our entire lumber package just about for about 500 bucks. Wow. And so we had someone Amazing. come out and regrade it. And so we got to use all of that again, which felt what, really wait, good. What does regrade mean? Um, so they come out, someone who's trained assessing the structural value just on visual inspection of lumber can come out and say if this has too many knots or is too split. Ah, okay. Um, and okay. we'll give you an, a one, two, or burn pile. And so by the regrading it, you were able to get used lumber that was graded well enough mm -hmm. to be able to build from. Exactly. Fabulous. So we saved that a is... bunch of money that way and it was great just to use a product from public transportation that gets used yeah, and then yeah. bring it over here. Sure. Um, so that felt really good because otherwise we were going to use what's called FSC certified lumber, which is for Forest Stewardship Council. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, granted all of that is coming from cutting timber, but this way we were able to use a reclaimed product. So here you're looking at the big curved so this, walls. So here. your structure is out here. You meet your structure on the outside, and then you've got a, ba a straw, straw bale, bale. Mm -hmm. next to it. Do you tie them in some way to the structure? Um, we do. So what happens is, if you can imagine a bunch of big fuzzy yellow bricks right here, and then we have a strap that runs on the outside and over the top and down, and then that way there's no way it's going to fall this way. It's certainly not going to fall out sure, because of the sure, siding. Sure. But that way we can also compress everything down and make sure that we get a really tight thermal envelope. Is that what and the it? reason for straw, why do you use straw? It's a minimally processed material, so it's just it's an agricultural waste product. So basically farmers, once they harvest the grain from the top, they have to figure out what to do with this waste product. And for a long time people were burning it until the burning was banned because of all the CO2 and particulate that it was generating. So then farmers are kind of stuck with this waste product that they don't really know what to do with. And at the same time, it's a highly insulative, um, okay. basically building block. So if you're able to use that, so and it's pretty much cellulose. So a lot of people will build houses and have blown in cellulose, but this is just basically stacked cellulose. Okay. And um, it's cheap, it's readily available, grows just about everywhere, farmers always want to get rid of it. So I think for all the bales in this house, we've probably spent like $300. Wow, so $800, we, boy, we're, we're doing really well here uh -huh. so far. Yeah. 
How do you keep, I mean, how do you deal with the moisture kind of factor with that as well, with any house, that's mm -hmm. true, but really thinking about so, keeping it from. Well, what we have here is we have all natural finishes so that it's breathable. And breathable in the sense that vapor can transmit from one side to the other. Water wouldn't necessarily, like a water droplet wouldn't come through, but because it's two layers of earth and then a layer of lime plaster. This is earth? This is earth. And then there's a layer of lime, and then we have this lime wash over the top. So that this which wall... Is, which gives us color. Yeah. Okay. Which is washable. So that Megan, mm -hmm. when she's living in the house, someone spills spaghetti sauce on here. They're not wiping the dirt off the wall. They're just wiping the spaghetti sauce off. Okay. So that way it's washable. So over time, you're not going to be accumulating... Because it's breathing. You're yeah. not going to be accumulating mm -hmm. moisture in here. Yeah. Okay. What did you do, what'd you do on the floor? So this is an earthen floor, and it's basically sand, clay, and straw. And so it's a replacement for concrete floors. So it has really great mass. Um, it feels a little bit softer than concrete does mm -hmm, on your feet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're able to use a lot of the materials that were on site that got excavated when we built the foundation. And then it's poured over hydronic heating so that in the winter it'll be nice and toasty. Hydronic it... heating. So you've got, you've got pipes, is that right, running through? Yeah, just tubes carrying heated water. And that gets, and how is it heated? Um, we have both an on-demand hot water heater, and then we have a batch heater, and then we have um, solar on the ceiling, okay. uh, on the roof. Okay. So we have solar thermal that helps as an auxiliary heater in the winter, nice. should we get some sun. Nice. And um, that'll help keep the floor. And the oh, that'll make this toasty, mm -hmm. I, or it probably does. Mm -hmm. So downstairs, I'm just sort of looking at the footprint here. We've got a living area mm -hmm. and a kitchen area. I don't know if, we, if the camera got to that. So mm -hmm. we've got a little U-shaped kitchen, and then... Um, so we've got a, a great room, yeah. if you think about it that way, a little kitchen, dining, living room, and a stairwell with closet storage underneath mm -hmm. the, stair, the stairwell. Exactly. And another room. Oh, I didn't see. So there's, there's an office or another bedroom. So there's a sort of a little bit of an L shape. Yeah, another room right here. Mm -hmm. Now, do you do the straw bale on the interior walls? The interior walls have what we call straw clay. And we have what's called a truth window upstairs that kind of we'll illustrates okay. what it is. We can, we can do that. Um, but we wanted, we wanted that on the interior, A, because it's a really small space. And when Megan's rocking out to music and Matt's rocking out to music, and they're different types that <laughs> hopefully it won't be super audible throughout the house. And that so, way... sound insulation. Sound insulation. It's also totally fireproof. Um, and then... Yeah, and then nice... And it takes the plaster really well, too. And so you've... Did you do... Uh, dual pane windows mm -hmm. and those sorts of things, if they probably require that pretty yeah. much. Yeah. yeah, you have to meet certain codes. And, and standard wiring and standard mm -hmm. plumbing. What were you using for your plumbing material? What did you do that way? Um, so we had an option between going copper or going what people call PEX, so it's just a plastic tubing that runs through the walls a lot easier, and we went for the plastic tubing just because of ease of insulation. Um, and our lighting, we have a lot of LED lights in here, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that Matt's long-term plan is to have um, active solar or photovoltaics on the roof so that he can be totally off the grid and maybe feeding back. Great. And Great. Um, other things, just to talk about the ceiling, is we used, um, this is all cedar seconds from a factory, and we wanted to not use any drywall in the whole building process, just because it's super commonplace, but really it's one of the building materials that has the third most embodied energy. Wow. So what you don't really I mean, hear I knew about... concrete was high, but mm -hmm. drywall? Drywall just because of the drying and oh. heat applied oh. to the process. Okay. And even though it's really easy to use, so we plastered over everything and on the ceilings we use the cedar. And the nice thing about it is it's, it's finished as soon as you put it up. Mm. So no sand. It's and lovely, it's warm and... Yeah. Well, the whole surface, all the surfaces are warm, mm -hmm. but... And then all the wood is reclaimed or from a site that's sustainable. So we just milled up a lot of all the trim that's around here. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. From yeah. Either stuff from deconstructing other projects or from places where we know that it was um, standing dead. Yeah, it's really, it's really lovely. I mm -hmm. just didn't realize that all three moldings around the three doorways in here are all different colors, uh -huh. probably all different kinds of wood. Yeah. Um, but it's lovely. Somehow yeah. it works. They each like work. I mean, miracle. each works in itself. <laughs> well, you obviously picked and chose mm -hmm. which to, 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 to put together. And all the doors are secondhand or reclaimed, mm -hmm. and same with the windows. What was the cost of the whole st structure? I'm yeah, trying to not what it is, but I think we're around one sixty. dollars um, So it comes down to about $200 a square foot, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. pretty mm -hmm. average for a custom home. Mm -hmm. So actually pretty good in some ways, given a lot of the features. 
and we saved some money. We had some volunteer labor. Matt, the homeowner, dedicated about a billion hours to making this project happen, <laughs> and um, and just sourcing different materials from places that we felt would be more affordable and more applicable to what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, should we take a moment to just pop upstairs, or yeah. is there anything un Let's unusual upstairs? upstairs? There's some fun stuff upstairs. Megan's room. <laughs> Um, so the stairs and all the floors up here are madrone. It's beautiful wood. And that all comes from basically when they'll do um, timber harvests in areas like southern Oregon where madrone is prevalent. They're not a really straight growing tree, so timber companies generally don't want them, so they leave them in these great big piles. And usually they either burn them or they just let them rot. So this is from one of those piles. It's gorgeous. That just got milled up. Gorgeous and wood. It's an amazing Beautiful, beautiful wood. textures to it. Mm-hmm. So upstairs, upstairs you see what, one, two rooms and a, and a bathroom? Two bedrooms and a bathroom, okay. correct. And then right over there we have the truth window that shows the straw. So that way oh, that's fun. Can so people can, can, can <laughs> see what, what's really inside there. Mm -hmm. So and it's a pretty tight wall system. Let's see if that light goes on. Ta -da. <laughs> Lighting director. Um, so once again, the cedar on the ceilings, and this is one bedroom. And then out here, we haven't finished it, but we'll have an eco roof over the porch. And oh, that's so, yeah. So an eco roof meaning it, living plants growing mm -hmm. and so on. Vegetated roof system. And I, I saw when it came downstairs that there's a rainwater catchment. Mm -hmm. that, that so the impact of this is going to be considerably less than a, than a standard home. In think? some ways, yeah. I mean, I guess that. That's one of the dilemmas with being a builder and having an ecological consciousness about what you're trying to do is that um, sustainability needs to be legalized on a certain level. And there's a lot of talk about that just in terms of, you know, when you're required to use certain products that are toxic, that there's alternatives to, but they haven't been engineered or, um, or where materials come from, or just like, it's, it's all really about the measuring stick you're using to measure whether something is green or not. And you can have a short-term look at it and be like, oh, well, we got this paint and we'll consider that green. But really, if you take the measuring stick even further, like you begin to look at more long-term effects. So maybe is paint applicable or should we do plaster mm -hmm. or just mm -hmm. the way mm -hmm. you measure things. Um, it all comes sort of, it all kind of comes down to how like what's your value system and how you're measuring things. So it's it's difficult. I would really like to think in, in my mind and in my heart that this really had a very minimal impact, but I also do know that like the cedar came from somewhere. Cedar trees are big and beautiful sure, and they grow sure, in wet forests. Sure. All the earth came from somewhere. The and all the plaster. metal in your mm -hmm. electrical wiring and the plastic yeah. in your so it's it's not perfect. There's mm -hmm. not it's it's in the right direction. Yeah. Everything has an impact and our one of our biggest goals is to build a house that's going to last a long time. So that's the other oh, aspect. Sure. So looking at the foundation and all the systems and how it's engineered is, I'm like, this hopefully will be a 500-year house with a really good wow. roof, strong foundation, and a great thermal envelope, and something that just will function for a long time so that it doesn't become obsolete after a little while. So May it, may it last 500 years. I hope so. <laughs> I mean, Matt's great, 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 great. Well, wait, I don't know. It's quite that After many. the eight, uh, <laughs> eight additions. Oh, yeah, another truth window. So that's the straw clay. That's so what's inside the interior walls. Mm -hmm. So it's straw dipped in clay and then packed in. Yeah, it's, so it's super it, dense. It is, it is. How do you pack it? Just by hand and with sticks. Oh, my so goodness. It's high tech. A lot of hard, hard work here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, another sweet room. Megan's room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the great view. Yep. You have the best view, don't you? Oh, this I is do. nice. See what's going on in my bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, there's the living the room. Alarm again. So, did we cover all the highlights? This is a couple of skylights couple in here skylights. for ventilation and for light. And mm -hmm. That's sweet. And then there's this the bathroom. House. So, what's happening? Is the bathroom not an ordinary bathroom? It's, it's ordinary in the sense of all the functions that happen in here, but um, maybe a little, I can't quite think of the right word, um, out, of the, out of the certain standpoint in that we have a composting toilet here. Right. And that's our only toilet. And how does that function, it's this a, one? It's a bucket system. Yes. So we go in the bucket, add sawdust with each um, use, yes. and then it goes into a main pile for its um, future decomposition. So we're doing some humanure sort humanure, of, uh, exactly. of practice here. Mm -hmm. And then also this house is plumbed for gray water. 
and I don't know if this gray water system has been hooked up yet. Right, but it's probably not when it's legal or, or mm -hmm. whatever. You'll yeah. be able to take gray water, meaning water from your shower, your sinks, not mm -hmm. your kitchen, or your kitchen from the as, kitchen well. as well. Yeah, yeah. in California they don't allow kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, to go, to be able to be filtered through your landscape. Yeah, right. so it could go directly to water trees or wherever, or just out into the landscape. So that that way we're not pulling from municipal water systems are from our rainwater catchment to water things that don't necessarily need drinking water to do it. Right. So right. that's our plan. All right. Thank you. And I think all the tile is secondhand. Mm -hmm. And Matt did all the tiling in the shower and it's a labor of love for him. So this is this is ceramic tile? Yeah. Yeah. It's really lovely. It has that it, it does have a hand built mm -hmm. feel to it. I mean yeah. with the, the salvaged wood and the you know, the finishes on the door, it's mm -hmm. really nice. It's, yeah. It feels like you're as close to a treehouse as you can get, sort of. But yeah, and still be in the city. Uh -huh. And still be in the city and be legal and have the rain off your, you know, all yeah. those things. And warm and mm -hmm. all of that. And that was the other thing, is just going through the permitting process and having a lot of inspectors come out here and see this house and some of our really, for them, total oddball weirdo ways of doing things when there's 12 people smushing mud into the walls. That And the interesting thing is I think it was really exciting for them to see something totally new. Mm -hmm. And there would be inspectors who would come in on their lunch hour to come check out what we were doing. And we're just totally curious. And I think it's the aspect of creating, kind of igniting their curiosity about it and letting them see that it actually does work and it's not this total fringe thing. Um, that was really great to be educational on that level so that the next time someone tries to do something that they'll be like, oh, I saw that one place and it right. looked really cool. Right. So. Good. So, so... Yeah, you're gonna make you're gonna make the way easier for the people to follow in your footsteps. Yeah, that's the goal: is to kind of create a prototype or a model that people can just pull what they need to from it. So, and then the next one will be easier. <laughs> I hope so. So, anything else in the big house? Um, I think that's I think that's it. Can you think of anything? Big? Mm. Mm. Not show us the studio then. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. All right, so let me show you our little studio here. And this is our um, first demonstration project. And it's a timber frame, which means that it's all mortise and tenon joinery. So we didn't use nails in the- Wow, oh, I see pegs. Yeah, so it's old traditional and it was really fun to do. Um, so it took me about two months to chisel everything and then two hours to tilt it all up. So it's <laughs> basically making your own kit. Whoa, and but, but plastered on the outside? Yeah, so plaster on the outside shingles below, the eco roof on top. In here, you can sort of see this is the straw clay construction for the wall system. Mm -hmm. And so this is our little truth window right here. Straw and clay. Compacted in, and the nice thing about it is it's also a lot like earthen building where it's really sculptural. Then we have earthen plasters in here. All the wood is reclaimed. This is lovely, yeah. The, you know, you've, you've sculpted. Mm -hmm. You've, you know, sculpted the, the window opening and added little mirrors. Yeah, this just little details. Sweet and little little painting. Yeah. Yeah. So like we were able organic. to do a lot of little creative touches. I mean that's the nice thing also about a really small space is that you can pay attention to it. Whereas a really big space is just hard to put that much detail in it unless you have a lot of time or a lot of money. And um, yeah, so this is one of our first prototypes to just kind of demonstrate small scale building and we have a little wood stove in here and we tried to keep it as passive solar as possible. And uh, it looks like you have what you reused reused lumber. Yeah, big. This All is big. This Lovely. came from uh, an old dairy barn that got deconstructed oh, in eastern eastern Portland. And and the bamboo. What what? How does the ceiling? What have you got up there? So up there we have the cotton insulation, and that's one of the few things that we bought new uh -huh. to go in here. And then over that is I think we have some reclaimed drywall. And then we have this just reed mat. So those little roll-up curtains we just put over there so we didn't do any paint. So or... it was organic mm -hmm. feeling, yeah. which it is. Yeah. It's a sweet space. It's, it's definitely really cozy. sweet. Cozy. Yeah, super cozy. And then just being in here, you don't really feel like you're in the city that much, which no. has kept some of my sanity for <laughs> <laughs> the last while. And then we're also able to do it because it's under 120 square feet, which at that point, um, that was the maximum limit for something you didn't have to get a permit for. So we didn't. We wanted to just bypass all the permits mm -hmm. and just do something mm -hmm. out of the ordinary. Mm -hmm. And now it's 200 square feet, which makes for much wow. bigger, more usable living space. For sure. So. I'm, I'm glad for the earthen floor. Earthen floor yeah. again. Yeah. 
This is this has been yeah. just delightful. <laughs> Thank you for both giving me the, um, the the underpinnings of your philosophy, what you're mm -hmm. trying to do, as well as a wonderful tour. I, mm -hmm. I yeah. salute you for doing some wonderful work. Oh. And I bet you're not done yet. No. <laughs> 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 Never done. <laughs> My guest today is Lydia Dolman, uh -huh. who is who is Flying Hammer mm -hmm. Productions, a yeah. natural builder woman. <laughs> You're watching Peak Moment, locally reliant living for challenging times. I'm Janae Donaldson. Join us next time. <laughs>